sorry that the announcement wasn't I'm sure it was much bigger. I thought it was like you were in fireworks or something. Hi. What's up? Alright, thank you Kevin once again for uh, coming here to the Super Mega Fest. Yeah, it's my third time. I yeah. just keep inviting me back. It's you, amazing. We thank you for keep saying yes. There you go. Oh, right. so, different time of year though, this time. It's usually been in the fall. That's true. Yeah. That's true. We're trying to get out of winter now, you know, so... I grew up in the cold weather Minnesota, so trust me, I know the long months of winter. So I moved to California, I put up with the traffic and the taxes and the politics, just so I can enjoy the weather. <laughs> is it worth it? Um, I know, 13 and a half percent state tax, I'm starting to wonder. <laughs> yeah, this is the Socialist Republic of California. Anyway. <laughs> I wonder how far we'll get into that. Oh no, we won't yeah, get, we don't have to get into that. I'll talk politics, I don't care. Now you grew up politics up in the and religion, nothing controversial, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Politics, religion, what else? Hey. Is that the only taboo somewhere? Go ahead, now. Right. So, Minnesota, huh? You went to university in Minnesota uh, as well? I went, I went to two different colleges. I went to Moorhead State University, um, played football and basketball up there, then I transferred uh, my last year to University of Minnesota. So I'm a Big Ten guy, and um, I always wondered why I stayed in Minnesota for four more years after high school, but I love, I love the state. I, like I said, the, winter, the winters did me in. I, 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 I'm a wuss now with cold weather. I, I like golfing in February and bugging my friends back home when they have three feet of snow. And um, yeah, you know what I mean? It's just, I, but I go back every summer. I, I love it. My, my best friends still live in the state, so I'm, I'm loyal to my Vikings. You know, I know this is this is patriot country or yeah, whatever else, but I get it. But I like Brady too. I do. I've golfed him before, and uh, he's a good guy. I've met him. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm sharing the paths. I, you know, I, I, I like most people. You like a winner. You know, so. But um, I'm missing the Masters right now to be here. You know, I'm a golf man. It's tough for me to miss the Masters. Again, thank you. It's yeah. a sacrifice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now um, I forget. You know, when you were in uh, school, I mean, you, you were always athletic. Did you um, want to pursue athletics professionally at any point? Was that a dream of yours? Or? I, I, may have, I may have thought that. I mean, I remember my first couple days uh, playing football when I was a freshman, and I called back to my dad and I said, I mean, it might have been a pretty big stunt in high school, but everybody here is as good or better. It was, it was an eye-opening experience. So I said, okay, I probably won't be a professional athlete. So I'm going to do something easy, like getting a job as an actor. So, um, for those of you who don't know, if you're lucky enough to get your Screen Actors Guild card, 97% of those people that have that card are unemployed right now. There's a 97% average unemployment all the time. So right now, basically, I'm, I'm unemployed. I start working in a couple weeks on a movie, but right now I'm unemployed. But I'm one of the lucky ones that has stayed busy for 30 years now. So, you know, not kind of work. Well, as uh, Dina Meyer just mentioned in uh, the last Q&A, um, well, that's, that's what an actor's life is. You know, you're employed temporarily and you're unemployed. It's constant. Yeah. Unless you're on a TV show that's on you know, for 15 years, if you're lucky. There are a few of those. Only, only, there's only like 3% of TV shows make it to a fifth season. Think of that. So I had seven on, on Hercules and five on Andromeda, so I count my blessings. Because most of, I did the last season of The O.C. And that got canned that last year, the fourth season. So it's it's tough to get past, you know, one, two, or three years. It doesn't have to all. Did uh, Mr. Burt Reynolds ever uh, guest that? star? Did Burt Reynolds ever guest star on one of your shows? Say what? Did Burt Reynolds ever guest star on one of your shows? He did not. Well, here he is. He, he should be. You would you would have came on Hercules? I would have loved that. Oh my God. Sam Raimi's an idiot, isn't he, for not hiring you? See, he would have done. He would have done. Would you play the space alien on Andromeda? <laughs> you would have given me a really cool ship. <laughs> All right. Three <laughs> o'clock. I know most of you didn't hear because that point. Burt Reynolds just said I'm a good guy, so there. So screw all of you! A little earlier in the table, we talked about some of the things you're working on. You've got three films you've been working on this year? Well, I got it through on. I, I, I met Mr. Reynolds back in 1988. 
I was invited to a, um, a fundraising party and got to sit at the same table with him. And that was really cool for me. And it was amazing for me. Because I mean, he, what, my, actually my favorite movie, all the movies he's done is Longest Yard. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm a big, I love football, I love the sport, and I love it in there. And to see Eddie Albert to play this bad guy from the Green Acres days, it's pretty cool. And that movie was just phenomenal. And uh, here he is here. I mean, it's an icon in the industry. So it's, it's pretty neat to meet him. I, I don't think he would have done Hercules. I think he's lying. But to, to get him on the show would have been pretty cool. But for the most part, every two weeks, every episode, we had a hot day to work with him. So I prefer that as much as, you know, I like Mr. Reynolds. We have, we have a bit, I would say, if we were in a different room, instead of sharing with all the vendors here, um, I, I had a video I love to show that I put together with all the women I kissed on the show. And it's to Tom Jones's I Want Your Kiss, sing it too. And it's pretty entertaining. And I actually got paid to do that, so. I tell my wife it's my job. This is my job, this is what I do. But uh, that's a whole different story. All right, what do you ask? Some of, oh, stuff coming up. Yeah, three, three movies. I do, I have three films coming up. I have two coming out. One's called Forgiven. I don't know what they're doing with it. I'm, I guess in straight to VOD, DVD. But it's a, it's a nice, it's a cop movie. It's a you know, good guy, bad guy type of thing. The other one is will be June 2nd, as I know now, it's supposed to be in theaters. And it's called uh, Joseph and Mary. I play Joseph. For those who don't know who he is, he's a stepdad to a kid named Jesus. And it was, it, it was a wonderful little movie. We shot in North Bay, Ontario. And I called it, I called the directors. The original was in Malta. And I shot a movie in Malta. And I said, oh, perfect. You know, and they're in the Mediterranean Sea near Italy. I said, this would be great. Um, so they shot Troy. I shot a movie there years ago that was really bad, but it was fun to be there. And um, they said, no, North Bay is going to double as Jerusalem. And I said, how? And we ended up shooting in a uh, landfill or something. I don't know. It was just... It was a quarry, whatever it was. It was pretty interesting. So we'll see how it works out. That's due in theaters June 2nd? Uh, yes. But then I'm starting a movie in Toronto. And uh, it's with Catherine Bell for JAG fans and Army Wise fans. And it's a, it's a backdraft type of movie. Play a fireman in it. It's really good drama. And then I start a movie with uh, Dean Kane. So Herc and Superman get together. And we're shooting a movie called Carpool Lane which is a drama and it deals, a lot of it deals with the carpool lanes and lovely LA traffic. It's an interesting movie. Um, he plays a high-powered lawyer. I play a homeless guy that he picks up on the side of the road because he's in a rush and he needs somebody in the car to use a carpool lane. He gives me a hundred bucks to get in the car with him and then stuff happens as we're driving. And then I've got a movie that I'm actually directing as well, starring, we'll be shooting in Georgia. And this is a Christmas drama called Let There Be Light, which I'm very excited. And we're this close to getting John Boyd to be in the movie with me. So I'm very excited for that. Nice. And the, the carpool one sounds especially intriguing. When is that filming or going to be filmed this year? No, wait, that's, 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 I'm, I'm filming starting about three weeks in Toronto, then I'm filming probably through October. So I'm pretty booked up. Yeah. And you also have a... Oh, by the way, I sold a pilot to NBC. TV series. So we're knocking on wood. It gets picked up. And of all weird things, it's my old boss, Sam Ramey from Hercules. So, uh, but I brought it to him, and he fell in love with it right away. It's called The Miracle Man. And it's a, uh, it's a, it's not touched by an angel, it's more like punched by an angel. So it's a, it's a really cool drama, and uh, we're, hoping, we're hoping we get, uh, get picked up. Did you come up with the idea? Uh, my wife did, actually. And uh, the military's involved in this, and it's, it's, it's pretty neat. So it's, um, yeah, it's going to cover a lot of bases. Sam Raimi of Spider-Man fame, among many other works. Uh, were you ever considered for uh, any part in the Spider-Man films? You know what? Every Christmas, I fly back from New Zealand. Sam Raimi was one of our exact producers on Hercules. And every Christmas, I fly back. And they had a big party. Universal Studios did Hercules. And every Christmas, Sam Raimi would walk up to me and go, Keep on working, man. You're making me a lot of money. I'm burying everything in the backyard in coffee cans. So after all this time, I go, all the money you supposedly made on me, because I know he made a lot of money in Hercules. He never came to New Zealand. He was never down there with it. His name was attached. Um, I said, you can't put me in one of your movies. Not one of your movies. And actually, my writers, my favorite writers from Hercules, Alex Kurtzman and Roberto Orsi, they were young punk, punk, punk writers. They came in the last three seasons when they were 23 years old out of college. They, they, go, they do Alias. 
they've got Friends, they have Sleepy Hollow, they've got all the Star Trek movies. And I tell those guys, you can't put me in one of your movies either in Star Trek. There's not one role I'm going to play. So welcome to Hollywood's, uh, you know, loyalty program. But I give them a hard time, trust me. I bump into those guys a lot. Let's see. Uh, questions, sure. All yeah. right. Uh, we can come along with the microphone if anyone has any questions. Raise your hand. Right there. First row, two people. Thank you. I just want to... Uh, you can stand if you want. You felt like it. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I hope it doesn't bother me to talk about when you got ill, but I want to, I want to thank you because I was hit by a drunk driver about a year after you got ill. I was paralyzed. And I came back, obviously, from the brink. And two, two heroes of mine helped me out with that. Christopher Reed and you. I want to thank you for that. You're an inspiration. Thank you. I love you, man. I, I do have a book out called True Strength. It took me years to want to write it because I didn't want to expose what I had to go through. At the end of season five on Hercules, I ended up having an aneurysm that I didn't know about on my left shoulder and it exploded in my body. And uh, this arm almost had to be amputated with of the hundreds of clots in my arms, three of the clots went into my brain, I suffered three strokes. And I'm very fortunate, obviously. With three strokes, I could have been killed instantly, could be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. Um, two went to my balance center, one went to my vision. Uh, it took three years to fully recover from it. Uh, season six and seven of Hercules were tough for me. I went from a 14-hour day down to a one-hour day. Well, sure, I did four months of rehab first, the therapy to learn how to balance and walk again. And then I, um, I went, from, went to about one hour a day, then two hours a day after the second month, three hours. We slowly just worked it back up. Bruce Campbell ended up coming to do a lot more episodes. Um, I don't remember Porcules, they turned me into a pig. If there was anything, just please keep me alive in the show. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't in it as much until you know, we went on. And my first year in Andromeda was a little tough too with all the special effects and lights and stuff. But I mean, it took a while. I still have repercussions. I still have a 10% loss of vision in both eyes. So it screws up my golf game. If I look the wrong way, the ball disappears. So I'm, I'm a magician in my brain. But uh, yeah, the book has been amazing. I, I, I meant to bring them here, but I just had a speaking event for my book in, in Idaho before I flew here. I came in yesterday. And I sold not all the books, only the books I, I sent there, but all the books I was going to bring along with me here. It was a very receptive audience. So uh, um, yeah, it is. It, but I'm, I'm fortunate. And you're not the first person to come up and say that the book has motivated them, which is amazing. So God bless you. And I wanted to add to the audience member's point, um, a week or so ago I was um, reading excerpts from the book, and I always like to read book reviews as well, and someone commented, and I was going to ask, it wasn't you on Amazon who posted that story, because someone on Amazon actually made a uh, review, posted a review in which he explained he had been hit by a car, and it's a similar story, it wasn't you. Well, you know what, we're, we're all going to hit that wall someday. If you haven't already, as my dad said, if everything's great in your life, just wait a while, you know? <laughs> And what do you do when you hit that wall? Uh, for myself, I, 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 had a, I had a strong faith, but I also had a strong will, and I also had a wife that's a New Yorker, and wouldn't let me feel sorry for myself. And uh, so, it was, well, it's you East Coasters, you know? You guys are tough, and it's a good thing. Um, I, remember, I remember throwing a pitch out at, at a Yankees game, and the crowd, some of the crowd getting out, I mean, Chicago as well. A bunch of names were coming out. I'm just like, going, just get it across the plate, man. Just get it across the plate. But um, they're the same people ask for autographs later, by the way. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, to me it's like you, you need that drive and you need to sit there and go, okay, it happened, what are you going to do? And that's what the book's about. Check out the Amazon, it's called True Strength. And uh, I hope it, uh, and there's good stories in there too. It's a lot of funny bits. My first meeting with Joe Pesci, my first meeting with Bruce Campbell. Bruce wrote a chapter in the book. Um, Michael Hurst wrote a chapter and some of the people I work with. So. My daughter is going to college in September to be an actress. What advice would you give to young people these days? Um, get a degree in math. <laughs> she know what no, I, I never, you know, it's funny. It's, it's, you, you, I, I went to a play when I was 11 years old. Minneapolis, where I'm from, they have the Guthrie Theater. The Guthrie Theater is very well known. A lot of Broadway actors come out performing. It's been there for 50, 60 years at least. And it was the Merchant of Venice, it was Shakespeare, I didn't know what the hell they were saying, the 11 year old kid is Shakespeare, I'm going, what is this? But I was blown away, I was mesmerized by it. But you know, on the way home, I was very quiet in the car, and my parents said, well, what do you think, you have a good time? And I said, you know what, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna be an actor. And I got one of those, that's nice, dear, pats on the leg. But um, I, I would never tell 
tell anybody because I was a jock and we made fun of the guys in the drama classes, you know? So I got, I stuck in that, that peer pressure thing and it wasn't until I got to college and I said, you know what? I, I, I know what I want to do. So I, I minor, I double major marketing advertising but I minor in drama. I knew what I wanted to do. So if she wants to do it, is that your niece? My daughter. Your daughter. You go for it because you have a passion for it. Unfortunately, it's like a drug. It really is. I love to act. I, I tell people, don't get involved in it and try to, and try to be, be famous with it because the chances of getting famous, seriously, are pretty slim. Kevin Costner came to my acting class. Uh, this is back in 92, about a year before I got her accused. And he used to study with his coach. So it was cool, all the actors of Kevin Costner. He was filming um, The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston at that time. So he came to talk to the class for a couple hours. It was pretty interesting. But one of the things he said, he looked at all of us and said, the chances of you making this business are very small. And I don't think any of you will probably have any success. And just be ready for that. And I knew what he was talking about. I walked up to him in the class and I said, Mr. Costner, I totally get what you're saying. But with me, you're wrong. I am going to make it. So flash forward about five years later. Hercules has just passed Baywatch as the most watched TV show in the world. I get invited to a, to a golf tournament. I love golf. A celebrity event in Monte Carlo. They fly me from New Zealand to Monte Carlo to play this Kevin Costner's tournament with Prince Albert. So I meet Prince Albert. I'm on the drive range. Kevin Costner walks up to me. And he says, Kevin, Sorbo, it's so cool to meet your show, Hercules. My kids love your show. They watch it. And it's just so cool. I'm glad you can make it out here for the show. And I said, Kevin, we've met before. And he said, we did. And I said, yeah. Do you remember Richard Brander, the acting coach you used to study with? Yeah. I said, you came to talk to that class five, six years ago. And he said, yeah, I remember that. And I said, you told us that no one would ever make it. Before I finished, he said, you're the guy who walked up to me and said you're going to make it. He says, welcome to the club. Amy Grant's in the movie with me. 
Um, I've known Amy for a long time and Vince Gill. Um, I do a lot of golfing stuff with, with Vince. Vince is a crazy golfer like me. And uh, it's, yeah, it's out right now. In fact, I had some at the desk. I think they're all sold out now. Sorry, you can get it somewhere on Amazon. I don't think it's out on Netflix yet. Yes, Burger? Can you get can you get pass that mic to her? I know they're talking, uh, students are talking about revisiting the world of like Xena and they have uh, Lucy and Renee I think in talks to come back. Do you think that you might uh, show up on that too or maybe Hercules could have some kind of... Well I don't know what they, you know, we spun Xena off in season, season three and I, th I think, I know that I know they're taught, they're rebooting it, it's not happening yet, it's not 100%, they're going to shoot a pilot, maybe, I know they're, they're in talks. Um, from what I heard from, from uh, Sam Raimi was, um, if, if Lucy and Renee are in it, I don't know what exactly the characters would be, maybe, because the Xena they were talking about would be some 25 year old like they were with, with Lucy at that time. Pardon? She also died. I can't, I can't. She died at the end. Well, that's why I said they'd have to do something, what it would be. They would shoot it back in New Zealand, and they, they, right now they're shooting the Evil Dead Season 2, and they're using most of the crew that we used back in the Hercules and Xena days. Would you be open to revisiting Would I be open to? I would love to. Sure, I would. I gave Bruce Campbell a hard time. I said, dude, I let you on my show 20 times. You can't put me on Evil Dead. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Once again, and Bruce is a good friend. We, we email back and forth. And, um, he actually been sending me photos of some of the old locations that we shot on. He goes, he says he's having these Hercules flashbacks, so. I love New Zealand. If you get a chance to go, please go. That was my home for seven years. It's, it's, my, it's my home away from home. And I've been there a couple times since, well, about four times through the years since her finished, but uh, it's, um, it's, it's a beautiful place. Great country. People are, people are awesome. Way in the back. Uh, so, well, we actually uh, met yesterday. Yes, we did. But uh, I wanted to ask you. Thank you for your service, by the way. My pleasure. Just came back from Afghanistan. It's true. Well, it was a couple years ago, so. I don't care. You, you served. Well, uh, my question was, like you were saying, you're having problems getting work, you know, certain films and stuff. Have you ever thought about doing, like, what Tony Todd and Tim Russell have done, with going into, like, fan films and stuff like that? Well, I just, I mean, I've been working. I'm, I'm, I shot like five movies last year. I got three lined up this year. And well, I know that. I just meant like going like more like into like hardcore like, fan stuff that I've seen pop up a lot. Like even David Fred and the new Star I know, I know Tony. I know Tony. I didn't know that he was doing that. I, didn't, I realized that. I mean, Tony did a couple episodes of Hercules. Yeah, well. I, I, that's why I brought him yeah. room on Hercules. Well. So he actually did an episode of Andromeda too. We had him come up there. Yeah. Yes, I remember this. This is cool. No, I so like Tony. Tony's judge. a cool dude, man. He's a great guy. But uh, yeah, you know, I just, I haven't looked that way yet. I do, I got so many, I have my own production company now for about seven years, and I just got another movie that looks like it's gonna get financed. So I, if I get this TV show going, I would love to do it. Because it's great to keep working these movies, but I'm kind of tired of doing three weeks here, five weeks there, six weeks there, whatever. Um, I have three kids, we homeschool, so if I'm gone more than a week, they travel with anyway. But I, I would love to get a series again, because I like this being a one place, I've been fortunate to do 12 straight years doing Hurricane Andromeda. Um, I would love to get back on and do a regular show, but I mean, I've, I've got so many movies right now in my catalog of movies that have been sent to me that I, that I, that I bought and I have the rights to, so we're busy trying to raise money for those. That's kind of where my focus is. Well, I just want to say I would love to see you and Tim Russell's run again. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Who does the homeschool teacher? Well, my wife. She's smarter than I am. So. <laughs> I found out pretty quick I'm not as smart as a fifth grader. I really did. There's truth to that game show, you know? It's like, wow. I mean, they come up to you with these questions from math, and I also come up with something. You know what, I'm so busy right now. People ask your mom that, you know? But my, my 14 and 12 year olds, they're on to me now. You know, they're, they're on, they know I'm dumb. But, you know. For those, for those of you who don't know, uh, excuse me, uh, Sam Sorbo, Kevin's wife, is a very popular, successful radio show. She is. She's number 12 in the country right now with 2 million listeners. You go to iTunes and get the app, the Sam Sorbo Show, and her, I, I get very jealous. She's got a 30-yard commute you know, from the bedroom to where the radio show's got set up for her. So, and, and equivalent of 30 miles in L.A. takes about an hour and a half to two hours no matter what time of day. That's the, the bad news for me. So I, I try to limit my meetings in Burbank and Beverly Hills to a minimum. Questions from the audience? Uh, 
I just wanted to ask the, um, the direction of the production company that you're doing now. The direction? The direction of the movies that you're doing. Uh, they're, they're all over the place. I mean, I've got all kinds. I've got like lots of thrillers. I've got family-friendly ones. I've got comedy ones, which is so family-friendly. Well, i got one comedy. It's called The Incorrect Man. It's not so family-friendly. But it's, it made me laugh so hard reading this. If you guys like David Zucker, Airplane, Naked Gun, stuff like that, it's right in the vein of that. I mean, I did, I've done a couple movies like that. I did a spoof on 300 called Meet the Spartans. You see, I got a couple. I, mean, I loved that movie. It was, it was so hard not to laugh in every single scene of that movie. It was just so ridiculous. I played the only straight guy in Sparta, and I'm the only one that can't get laid by Carmen Electra. <laughs> so, we make jokes about that all the time you know, on, on the show. There's a scene where I'm supposed to have 300, I'm supposed to find 300 warriors to go into battle, and I only find 13. And we skipped the battle, holding hands, singing, uh, Gloria Gain as I will survive. And we had to do so many takes on this, because we just kept laughing. We just kept doing this great thing. We're like little giggly kids, you know, in junior high, so it was funny. But it, it, you know, my, the, the mix of movies I do is, is sort of all over the place right now with the scripts that I have. So I, I, I mix it up. Like I said, 20 pages, and I like it. I, I want to do it. So my manager gets mad at me, because I take, she says I take on too many projects. But I say, well, I like to, I like to work. I don't like to sit around. I get very bored sitting around. Anything else? Any other questions? Oh, we're in the back. Kevin, I wanted to thank you uh, for the movie you appeared in Caged No More. That was a very good message you got across, and I appreciate you taking the time to make a movie to get that important message across to the public. Thank you. Caged No More well, I dealt with human trafficking. And I, I, I played two parts in it. Good and evil, what else are you gonna do? It's good and evil. And it's based on a true story, actually, where this one twin brother had gotten in such trouble financially with bad guys and everything else, he actually took his two uh, 12 and 14 year old daughters to sell them into the sex trade in Greece. And it was pretty weird to play a slimy guy like that, because I don't know how you get to that point that you would actually sell one of your own children into the uh, sex trade business. And it's, uh, I didn't realize how big a problem was here in America. It's a huge problem. The Super Bowl, uh, not this year, but last year in Phoenix, they busted up a huge uh, sex trade ring that was happening right there. So it's, um, it's pretty bad. We have millions of people in this country alone that are involved in that. So it was, a, it was an uh, interesting movie to be part of. So I hope we end up doing the other two. It's supposed to be a trilogy. So I don't know where they're at right now. Uh, excuse me, a couple questions about Hercules, if that's okay. Sure. Thanks. Um, when the original pilot here, was it always meant to be a series or was it just... It was, it was originally five two-hour movies. And Anthony Quinn. I got the, Anthony Quinn played Zeus. I got a whole year with Anthony Quinn. And I got Anthony Quinn stories, trust me. They were pretty cool. And so was it due to, well, due to the success of those TV movies? Or? You know what's funny? There was a scene that Michael Hurst and I were doing in the, in the second movie that um, introduced the Rene O'Connor character, and Eric Close, actually, before he went on to do stuff he's been doing. He's on, he's on Nashville now, I think, the series Nashville. And um, I told Michael after the scene, I said, you know what, they're gonna make this a series. He goes, you think so? I said, it's too much fun, man. This is a who. This is the action, you know, and you got these beautiful women in there, and you got the fun, you got great great fight scenes, and the humor mixed it with it all. It was, it was like, very good. And it was, it was, it was such, I, I knew it. And by the third movie, they came up to me and they said, you know what, the studio decided that, because none of them had aired yet. But after the third movie, they said, um, this Universal Studios called up the production team in, in, in New Zealand and said, we're gonna keep Kevin down and we're gonna go right your way into a one hour series, which was cool. So I, we kind of, we, we knew we had something good that people would like. You know, not only did we spin up Xena, we spun up Young Hercules, that got canned up in two years, but that was Ryan Gosling as a 20-year-old playing me as a teenager. A lot of people don't know that. Ryan was very upset. And I took him to dinner before he flew back to the States. He says, Ryan, you're 20 years old. You're a good actor, you'll do fine. I look at this guy, you know. I bumped at him, I said, dude, maybe you should put me in one of your movies. And it was pretty incredible. But if you look, when we spun up Xena in season three, because of the success of Hercules, there were so many other copycats out there that came out that same year. There was Sheena, there was Conan, there was Tarzan, there was uh, Robin Hood. 
It was always in the show, it was sent back. All these shows came out, but that's what, you know, what happens in Hollywood movies and TV shows, but something's good. I mean, how many zombie shows do they got now, guys? <laughs> they, they, they'll, they'll show business, right? Not show show. If they, 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 they want to keep making money off this, they'll keep making money off of it. Any more questions from the audience? Anyone? Hello, I was, Hello. Sorry. Uh, I was wondering what, how it was to go from Hercules and mythological, you know, dirt type to Andromeda with spaceships and traveling stars. My wife was, says my wife says I went from Herc to Kirk. <laughs> so um, I'm a big Star Trek fan, the original series. I must have seen them all 50 times. I do. I went all through high school and college and all that stuff. Even to this day, if I'm flipping channels, I'll watch it. And uh, I was on, it was halfway through season seven on Hercules, I get a call direct to my house from Major Ron Baird. And I'm sitting there going, oh come on, this isn't Major Ron Baird. And she says, yes it is. And she goes, Kevin, I have a show that my husband wrote back in 1969. It's called Andromeda. The first captain every creator after Captain Kirk was Captain Dylan Hunt. And I think my husband would be so proud to have you play Captain Dylan Hunt. And I just said, sold, I'm in. And uh, we ended up shooting five seasons up in Vancouver, British Columbia. We were supposed to get seven seasons, but the Tribune company that owned us went bankrupt. The Cubs were bad back then, so they were losing money on the Cubs. They were losing money on the, on the, on the papers. They owned the LA Times Tribune. They owned radio stations. And those, you know, the advent of all the internet and everything, all those radio stations were hurting, so a lot of, a lot of them got shut down. So they had to freeze all their assets, even though we were the only one making money for them. They had us. Uh, Beastmaster and Mutant X were the three shows they had. They had to cancel all these shows. So it was very frustrating. But anyway, um, I came back um, to LA. I met with Majel and I was in the house, Gene Roddenberry's house. I never got to meet Jeff Gene, obviously, because he died back in 92 or something like that, somewhere around there. And, but I got, she kept his office exactly the same. So I got to sit at his desk. She kept everything the same as it was in the past. They had, they had variations scale models of, of um, the Enterprise going through the different generations of what they ultimately decided on. And I'm looking at these different scale models. And I looked at Major and I said, if one of these went missing, you wouldn't care, would you? <laughs> so I can't imagine what they would get for that. But um, it was amazing when I read his earlier work. So he had he's still many other things out there that Paramount Studios owns everything now. They paid off Major to have full control of everything in Star Trek now. And uh, I, I, I said I'm sold, and we went on to do this thing right away, and it was, it was an honor for me to be part of something like that, because as I said, I was a huge, huge fan of it. And I had, I had about four months off between both shows, so the first thing I did is I didn't want to worry about lifting weights two hours a day every day <laughs> anymore. So I did some stuff I thought I would never do. I hired a Pilates instructor and a yoga. And uh, I still have the weights, but a lot lighter and have lighter weights and a lot of reps and a lot of cardio as well. And so I dropped about 15 pounds of muscle. So I wasn't gonna do that anymore. So I still like to work out. I still work out every day now, but um, I'm old, so I can't work out as much as I did in Hercules. But it, it, was, um, it was interesting to do that because it, it was a big difference, you know? I mean, it was, from that thing to a character that was basically, this guy could die, something could happen to this person, it was different. And I also like the fact that we had a lot of other actors on the show. I was like, spread the wealth, I don't want to be every 14 hour days, you know, spread the wealth. So, uh, I love Vancouver as well, Vancouver is another place that uh, I highly recommend. Actually, Vancouver and Auckland, New Zealand have a lot in common in terms of the feel of the city and the people. But it was, um, it was great to be part of that as well. Would we do the next two seasons? I would love to because they're they're out of their they're out of their um, lost their, their their bankruptcy court now. But I I don't think they would do it now. You see, originally we were hoping that that uh, Sci-Fi Channel would buy it because they they came in to buy the show as a whole to air on Sci-Fi Channel. But in our last season, they started doing Battlestar Galactica, and they wanted they put all their money into that. And that's what they wanted to get going with that. So they weren't willing to take that step to go into it. So it was too bad. Because we would have loved to give not only the fans, but we loved doing the show as well. And you know, we had a lot of humor in that show, just as much. You know, we were throwing one-liners here and there. And I always made fun of the guys in Stargate, because every planet they go to looks like Vancouver, British Columbia. So I'm 
beautiful green trees, you know, so we did a lot of green screen to make it look different than we see now, so. And I remember Michael Shanks comes on to do the show as a guest star, and uh, by the third day I said, something's going on between him and Alexa Doy, Alexa played Andromeda. And I remember Lisa Ryder, who played Becca Valentine, she goes, oh, there's nothing going on, she's got a boyfriend, Peter, and I said, she doesn't have a boyfriend, Peter, anymore, trust me. And of course, sure enough, they got together and been married now for, I don't know, 15 years or something, had a couple kids, so. That's how that ended. You now people ask me, and my, and my buddy said, why is it that people in Hollywood, they all marry each other, and the directors marry actors, and everybody's married within the industry. So I looked at one of my buddies and I said, I don't know, you're a teacher, you married a teacher, you tell me. You know? That's the environment you're in, you know? It's, you're, that's who you meet, that's who you're around. So, it's kind of the way it is. Do another question? It's weird to me, it's just all the, this is a solid room, so we have some privacy in here. Would you guys be quiet out there? <laughs> so, I was just wondering, who won? Who I won? played a half god on TV for seven years. <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> I like to tell women the half god places in the waist down, but anyway, go ahead. Did you beat Tom Brady? No. Did I beat him? Of course, I beat them all. <laughs> the only one I can't beat, pro quarterbacks, I can't beat Tony Romo. Tony's like a scratch golfer, he's really good. I'm a single digit guy, but he's good. I played with Peyton Manning, played with Eli, played with all those guys. You know, here's the weird thing, I'm a, I'm a reasonably big guy. You know, I'm a little over 6'3". You meet these quarterbacks, these guys are all 6'5", 6'6", six, six, six. they're huge. They're like mammoth, there's forearms on them, it's like, it's a different world, guys. It's a different world. These guys are massive, massive guys. Who else? What else? Kevin, what's that in the charity that you're involved with for children? Don't charity? I've been one after school program in the state of California for 19 years now. It's called the World Fit for Kids. I'm very proud of it. Um, we all know our public education system isn't perfect. Uh, LA County has a 54% dropout rate. 54%, starting as low as fifth grade. Um, we average 12,000 kids a year, we're a non-profit. Uh, we average a 98% graduation rate and 67% higher GPA. So I, bring a, I go to D.C. once a year to meet with Congress. I don't care where you stand politically, there are bozos on both sides of the aisle, trust me. And I sit there and go, you know, here's the stats, the facts. Why are you not helping me put this program in every city across America is beyond me. And um, all I do is get a pat on the back. There's, there seems to be a purposeful dumbing down of our kids, and I do not like it. California tried to outlaw homeschooling four years ago. Yeah, because homeschool kids were doing so much better than public school kids. And we can't have that. Because everybody should get a trophy. Because people feel left out. So I said, yeah, you know what? There's a master's tournament right now. Everybody, every one of those guys should get a green jacket and a million dollars. Because they feel really bad if they don't win. I'm sorry. But you know what? Seriously, I grew up, I'm the fourth kid of five, I grew up in a teacher household, if you're a public school teacher, you know what kind of money you make, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, my clothes were hand me down to my older brothers, I remember powdered eggs, powdered milk, I remember my dad anguishing over the last three dollars we had to end each month, but the one thing my parents instilled all five kids was hard work, and you work hard, and if you can work, work, I get it, I'm all for my tax dollars going to people need it, trust me, I have to get out and get Twitter, I, I want to help people that need help, I have zero problem with that, and it should be shown by the after school program I'm part of for 19 years, but you know, we're taking advantage of what people are doing, and this cradle the great mentality of the government, government's supposed to work for us, we don't work for government guys, okay? When the government controls the schools. And they control the schools. Exactly. I think they just go to the private sector. But what about what, 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 what did Ronald Reagan say? The greatest words of fear, hi, I'm from the government, I'm here to help. <laughs> private schools, parochial schools, what about what no, I just think, I just think that California's take on them if they wanted to help Well, Cal school. California now ranks 50th in public education. They were fifth 50 years ago. They're 50th now. Me, Rhode Island's not the worst? No, Mississippi was the worst, but California passed them. <laughs> so we passed them. But yes, sir, way back there. I can't hear a word you're saying. Come, come up here. Just walk, walk to the front, because no one can see you in your outfit. <laughs> I don't have the rest of it. I'm sorry. Two, we got two minutes. Okay. No worries.
stories. Thank you very much for having the courage to get a type of voice in the uh, entertainment industry. It doesn't always work well for people when they stand up and fight what they believe in. No, I, it, 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 it has hurt me in Hollywood. I'm not going to deny that it has hurt me being outspoken. Um, but it, it's to the point I don't care. Because here's the thing. The Hollywood screams for tolerance. Have tolerance from my point of view, too. I don't, I don't begrudge, I'm a pretty little and little kind of guy. I don't sit there and say you shouldn't be like that, you shouldn't be like this. I love a good debate. Whether you're an atheist or a Christian, or whether you're, whether you're gay, whether you're not gay, I don't care. I know plenty of gay people, I know plenty of Jewish people, I know plenty of black people, I know plenty of Asian people, I know plenty of wasps like me, you know? And to me it's, I, I got friends in all those, all those worlds. To me it's, I, I, I love a debate. I don't like the anger that comes with the debate. It doesn't have to be angry about it. And Hollywood screams for tolerance, yet they have no tolerance. They scream for freedom of speech, but only if you agree with what they say. And that's kind of the way they are. That kind of, I don't like the hypocrisy of it. I don't begrudge people anything of what they believe in. I don't care. I've got atheist friends. We've got great debates. We still part as friends. I don't have that kind of hatred in me. To me, it's just like, let it be, you know? The Beatles, let it be, you know? So it's, to me, it's... it's, it's we are, we are all different, you know, we are created equal, there's a sperm and the egg, but after that we're quite different. I'll never be as good as golfer as Tiger Woods. I'll never be as good as basketball player as Michael Jordan. But you know what those guys do? They inspire me. They inspire me to want to be better. But if somebody was better than me in any kind of sport, I worked harder to be better at that sport. Never got to that level, but it inspired me to want me to make me be better, and there's nothing wrong with that. Competition is a good thing, and that's what made this country great, and that's just my two cents on it. Thank you guys Thank you. so, so much. Appreciate you, I appreciate your patience. Let's stop by, you guys stop by Kevin's table if you haven't already.